Welcome to Films and Stuff with your hosts, Pete Mitchell and Ethan Hunt. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Films and Stuff podcast. I'm Ethan, joined by the erstwhile Pete. Hey, Pete, what's up? Not much, buddy. How are you? I don't know if really erstwhile captures your essence, but <laughs> I thought it was time for a new intro. So here we are. It's time for first a cinematic review of the summer can we call it blockbuster twisters yeah is blockbuster too big of a word no it's a pretty i mean look results aside it's basically a blockbuster right released in the middle of summer it's done pretty well domestically it's got one movie starring glenn powell at least one certified movie starring glenn powell and a couple of up-and-coming ones so that's right So I saw Twisters, and first, this is, I guess, a continuation of the Twister that was, man, who is this? Was it Helen Hunt, like 25 years ago? Yeah, and Bill Paxton. No. Wow. Bill Pullman? No, Bill Paxton, yeah. Where we were really introduced, probably against all odds, it was probably like the first weather movie, you know, that we were introduced to. You know, where these two people were were basically storm chasers, right? And then there's been a few, not spinoffs, but like copycats about something kind of like similar. But now, this summer, Twisters is, again, not a sequel, but it's basically kind of like the franchise rebooting. Is that a fair way to say it? This theoretically comes in as a pure sequel. I've read that they wanted to bring Helen Hunt in for like a cameo. a cameo. Yeah. yeah, but I guess they didn't, or maybe they didn't have the budget or the time. I don't know, but yeah. Can we go into one of the things that I think we do as well as anyone in this world? Why didn't they have Helen Hunt be like the mom who died in a tornado, and that gave rise to the daughter who's so obsessed with tornadoes? Or even Glenn Powell's character, right, that's so obsessed with tornadoes. Why didn't they do that? Well, that's a way to do it. Yeah. You don't seem as enthusiastic as I am about that. <laughs> Only because... That's a way to do it. <laughs> I like the way they did this. I'll tell you why I like the way they did this. is because with the way Glenn Powell is and his persona, it fits yeah. that he seems like that kind of guy. So there's two characters, right? There's There's the Glenn Powell character. Tyler... And then Daisy Edgar Jones, who's Kate. Yeah. Do you like their characters? I don't have a problem with those characters. Yeah. I mean, I like the Glenn Powell character. I think the Daisy's character, Kate, is a little bit too uptight, studious, grappling with her demons. You know, I think the the Glenn Powell character is a little bit more... Lucy Goosey. Yeah, I mean, can I say like real and relatable, you know? It seemed so stereotypical though, right? Like she's the A type studious and he's yeah. the rebel without a cause. I'm doing yeah. this for the heck of it, who turns yeah. out to have a heart of gold. It felt like a Hallmark movie kind of thing, right? It did. It definitely did feel like a Hallmark Christmas movie made in the plains of Oklahoma. Right. right? She goes home for the summer and she's like, Oh, you know, I've got this serious job and she meets this reckless guy. And then you find out this reckless guy is actually a really nice guy. He isn't really reckless at all. He's doing this for a good reason. It feels exactly like a home. I mean, I know Glenn Powell is hot right now, right? I mean, he was hot after, after Maverick. And then he had the other movie, anyone but you, right? Yeah, so, I mean, exactly. he's got a lot of good Hollywood cred going on right now. But I mm-hmm. thought this was a good role for him where he did something a little bit different, but still kind of keeping his trademark swagger and smile. And Absolutely. Right? It, that, that's, so that's what I meant by that comment, yeah. which is it fits that he plays yeah. the rough and tumble, seems like he's the reckless type or seems like he doesn't have a care in the world, yeah. but really he does. And he's got a, yeah. you know, he really is doing this for the betterment of his men and his brothers yeah. and sisters and yeah. that kind of thing. 
That's why I thought the Daisy character was a little bit, you know, the pull up her ass. You know, yes, she was type A and she was grappling with all their demons and her guilt and blah, blah, blah. But that's why I thought, like, it would have been great if you could have tied this to, like, Helen Hunt dying. She never got to know her mom or something. And, you know, you know, she she's always had this fascination with tornadoes, you know, because of her mom or her dad or something like that. But in any case, this is where we are with the movie. Did you like this for a summer blockbuster? I thought that for a summer blockbuster, it had the vibes and the feeling of like, you know, those old school disaster movies. Yeah. They seem to be. Now, look, I'm no meteorological expert. But it felt like there were an awful lot of cyclones and tornadoes (laughs) in a very short period of time. I mean, also, I agree that it is. I mean, and it was a very like festive environment right yeah like the, everyone's just kind of like sitting around like at the at the dine-in and then it's like well let's look east should we chase that one nah what about west should we chase that one no that one's not gonna be big enough Ooh, look at this one north i think that's the one we should go after okay well let's get in our car and drive quick right yeah i just felt like it was <laughs> like how many tornadoes actually occur In any given summer, I'm not saying there aren't more than one, but it felt like they were chasing after bulls at a rodeo corral, right? Like, they just, there was no shortage of them. And that's exactly right. That scene at the diner, the laugh was just like, how are there so many that you can pick and choose which one that you want to go after? And if that was, I feel like this would be on like national, if not global news, right? Like, what is going on with? the environment that there are so many <laughs> tornadoes all within a couple miles of each other and all within like, <laughs> hours of each other. Yeah. From a, a weather perspective. And it would be fun to have like a meteorologist or like someone like who does weather for a living, like opine on this movie, because I bet that they were just like cussing to their, like their like date, the whole movie. Like, what is this? This is nonsense. That's not how it works. You know? <laughs> Yeah, it's just, uh, it seemed a little out of place for me. True. But, I mean, it is a movie, right? I mean, we need to see a lot of twisters, of otherwise. Of course. Otherwise, what's the point of calling the movie Twisters It Up? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A few notable castings that went underneath the radar. Remember, at the beginning, we saw Kate with her kind of team of collegiate-aged colleagues, Yeah. right? One of them was named Addie. Sally Draper from Mad Men. You're kidding. Okay. Yep. We also saw Sasha Lane, Lily. She was in the other show recently with Tom Holland on Apple TV+. Plus. We saw Maura Tierney as Kate's mom. And Anthony Ramos, Javi, who we saw in the much maligned, maligned <laughs> Transformers, Dinobot, era whatever that was right whatever it was yeah extinction no i can't remember yeah it was something something awful. like that let's try to purge it from our memories it had already been purged until i had to see him show up in this movie so that's twisters i mean plot wise i don't think there's a whole lot to say i mean we kind of know it's going to be about twisters and it follows a very very typical format right there's excitement there's tragedy there's redemption kind of the end right i mean yeah. it it follows a very safe script or or in terms of like character arcs tell me if i'm wrong when i summarize it as a very tolerable moderately enjoyable summer popcorn munching film not going to change your life you may forget you saw it a week later that's probably fair enough no one's gonna hate it no one's gonna walk out saying that was miserable not what i was promised yeah not exactly. not enough tornadoes not enough damage not enough glenn powell i think everyone kind of got what they paid for and you can go home and that's the end of it yeah yeah i think what's interesting about this is if you've seen the split of the take i think it's like like 80 percent of its global box office take is from america and only 20 percent international or something like that yeah. whatever the numbers are it's highly skewed and yeah. i think not because it's a very American movie, in quotes, but I think that the relatability comes down really to America. 
And I'm not saying there aren't tornadoes or cyclones or monsoons or any other kind of circular weather event in other parts of the world. (laughs) I just think that the concept of tornado chasers and these kinds of things hits probably more with, you know, quote unquote, middle America or rural America than it does anywhere else. I agree. This is not a Michael Bay film. You know, we've seen, you know, where you'd have like San Andreas, you had 2012, you know, you had some of these like real disaster disaster movies, movies, you know, where like everything just got sucked up. And this is actually kind of realistic. You know, you see like a lot of damage and destruction and a lot of wood and a lot of stuff. But again, you don't see like the Empire State Building being sucked up. It's not happening in the middle of Manhattan. It's not something like that. So I think part of its realism is also the reason that it doesn't have I don't say that's not why it has a wider audience but I mean it's not intended to be that you know massive like crazy CGI yeah. disaster the stake seems very low key yeah. and very yeah. local yeah right? and I'm not saying the stakes are low because it's of course a tornado people's lives are lost in real tornadoes but I mean low key in the sense that it yeah. doesn't involve a global population no and local in the sense that, you know, your average citizen in the middle of Piccadilly Circus in London or yeah. Champs-Élysées in Paris or wherever in any other part of the world is going to be able to be like, well, that's a real problem for me. That's right. It'll be fun to watch and enjoyable as action set pieces, but in terms of relatability, except for those swaths of states that it does affect in the u.s there are very few other people who are going to be able to be like yeah i know exactly what those people are going through given that you mentioned the the box office split how is this done like in terms of like raw numbers dollars so in raw dollars the movie cost 155 million dollars to make again whoa all of this is without prints and advertising so there's probably another 50 million to 100 million dollars in advertising that so far, the movie's made $316 million, which means that it probably won't break even. $150 million for this? Yeah. Where? <laughs> I mean, Glenn Powell is not making $50 million. million. Yeah. No one else is like making a crazy salary. There's some special effects, I guess. No, I imagine the special effects is what caused most of that budget to balloon up because the the tornado yeah. effects, they look pretty damn good. Yeah, you're right. That's probably where everything is. Because the rest of it basically just takes place with like a pickup truck with like a bunch of like debris. Yeah. And, you know, you're not playing for on set in the middle of Manhattan. You're not paying yeah. Yeah. in Chicago. You're not paying. Yeah. The, you really could. Again, yeah. no disrespect. You could film this. Anywhere. On any green farm. Yeah. So we saw this. This is pointing to a wider issue that I'll get to. But we saw this primarily because there's not a lot else happening in the summer blockbuster market, which is bonkers to me. Summer is a time when everyone is going to the cinema, right? They want to beat the heat, escape, get out of the sun. It's too warm to do outside activities. What is going on in cinemas? If this is like the biggest movie right now, where are we? We're in like early August, mid-August. I mean, we should be chock full of great films, right? Yeah, it's been a rough summer. Why is there nothing else out? (laughs) That's a great question. And not one that I can answer, to be honest. Still, we're seeing Deadpool and Wolverine, Alien Romulus. It ends with us. Despicable Me 4. Inside Out 2, I mean, who is now going to the cinemas in August that hasn't seen Despicable Me 4, Deadpool and Wolverine, or Inside Out 2 in the last three months, May, June, July? Borderlands, which we reviewed and has made a grand total of how much, Pete? $18.9 million. How much is this movie costing? (laughs) $18.9 million worldwide? How many cinemas is it playing in? How much is that per cinema? That just seems like like a mistake, right? If it had made 180, we would still say it was 
underperforming, right? Guess how much money the movie cost? $120 million. Whoa. Borderlands costs less than Twisters? Oh, there's a lot of things to unpack there. First of all, I'm really surprised. That's actually, I mean, call me old school, but that's kind of what I think of what a movie should cost. $120 million is still a lot of money. And Borderlands, wow, that seems like good value for that money, huh? Yeah, it does until you realize it only made 18.9. Yes. Twisters at least made 316. Unfortunately, there's some bad lessons in there for, for movie execs now. Because they're going to say, like, we've got to spend $400 million. If we spend 120 look what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean. But that's not the problem with Borderlands. You can argue who has been cast, but it hasn't been. They haven't spent enough on the cast or the names of the cast are not big enough, you know? For me, Borderlands shouldn't have cost more than 100 I think they could have saved another $20 million by not casting these famous people. And I think that it would have still bombed, given the script, but it wouldn't have been <laughs> not as bad. I still can't get over the fact that Borderlands, there's two things there just I will not be able to get over them all day today. I know it. that Borderlands has only made $18 million. The other thing is I'm really surprised that Twisters then cost so much more to make. And that's the list. That's the list of what else is, is playing right now. Like the rest of the stuff I haven't even heard of. I haven't heard of Imaginary, which I, I don't know, I guess seems like a horror. Hero Kid. Long legs, all these like crazy, scary things, you know, like there's nothing out. Isn't that a terrible roster of things to go to the cinema and see? Those yeah, are my it's options. Pretty, it's been a pretty weak summer this year. Is this still writer's strike? No, I, this is no longer writer's strike issues. I think this is just, this is the spate that it was. Having said that, profitability wise, it's been a pretty good summer, right? Inside Out 2 yeah. made a 1.6 billion. Deadpool and Wolverine is at 1.1 billion. Oh, Despicable yeah. Me 4 is at 800 million. Bad Boys made 400 million. My God. Kingdom of the Planet Apes made 400 million. Twisters at 316. But summer blockbusters this summer just feel very, very flat. And I think the biggest disappointment for me is that the Garfield movie has dramatically outperformed Borderlands. <laughs> dramatically. <laughs> Garfield is $254 million. And Borderlands is like $19 million? Like, how is that even possible? That's bonkers to me. Look, let's put things in perspective, all right? We've both had some duds on our list. You had Borderlands on your list and you had Fly Me to the Moon on your list. Oh, where's Fly Me to the Moon? You had that at number nine. Is that my fault? I'm going to say that's not my fault. Look, I, I mean, I haven't seen the movie yet. I'm seeing it Neither this weekend. I. But it felt like a romantic comedy. And those things don't typically do incredibly yeah. well in summer movies. Those are big names, though, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's absolutely true. Like Scarlett Johansson, Channing Tatum, compare that to like the bike riders. Did I have the bike riders in my top 10 list? You had it as your first wild card. I mean, the bike riders also, which has done terrible, right? It's only made 35 million. It's Tom Hardy, Austin Butler. Jody Comer. I mean, you know, about like a motorcycle gang. Like that seems like when you just hear about it, that seems like a movie that could be, oh, that could be a great summer movie, right? Yeah, it turned out not to be that at all. But I mean, when you're guessing these things at the beginning of the summer, like I'll take my lumps. That's, you know, that's on me. But I think that my my choice of that as a wild card was justified. I mean, that's a good cast. Ideally, I mean, that genre seems kind of interesting. Like that could have been something, right? Yeah. No. Borderlands is disappointing because, again, that video game has been so successful. Yeah, it's a huge franchise. That's what I was banking on is what other like video game franchises have we seen? And I thought like, okay, fine. It's going to be a little bit weird, but like this is going to be something that everyone knows and so many people are going to go to. And here we are sitting at 19 million. That's like horrible. Yeah, just terrible. Just terrible. But on the plus side, I mean, mostly our top three was accurate. We knew that Inside Out 2, Despicable Me 4, Deadpool and Wolverine, 
we're all going to be very good. And yeah. I think now the takeaway is there will definitely be an Inside Out 3. There will definitely be a Despicable Me 5. And Deadpool and Wolverine, while there may not be another Deadpool and Wolverine, definitely we're going to see these characters in every MCU movie for now until you and I are done doing this podcast, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how they don't put these in there. They made a billion dollars. It's not a joke. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds now is, is he the most powerful person in Hollywood right now? No, I don't think so. But who's the guy who comes in and says, hey, I'll do it. But I want not even like just about money, but just about like, I want this and I want this and I want this. Uh, I think there's still a couple people who could do that, right? I feel like Brad Pitt could still do that. I think uh, George Cruz... Peeney could still do that. Cruz could definitely uh, do that. I think Cruz and Ryan Reynolds, I think Brad Pitt does not walk into anyone's office and be like, hey, all right, I'll be the lead for this action franchise, but I need this and this and this. They're like, dude, come on. Like, you are Brad Pitt. It's a big name, but like, don't kid yourself. Where's Brad Pitt's last billion dollar movie, right? Yeah, but that's because it's also a superhero yeah. movie. It's totally a fundamentally different thing. We're definitely going to have another Bad Boys. Oh, I hope not, because they're really, I mean, they're both looking their age now. Yeah. We're definitely going to have another Kung Fu Panda 5. But there's absolute. I mean, come on, man. Bad Boys made $400 million. There will definitely be another Bad Boys. There's probably going to be another Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, even though I'm, I haven't seen this and I'm so exhausted by the story. I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed this film. So there will definitely be another one of those. The Garfield movie? <laughs> there will be a second Garfield. Dude, it made $250 million. Garfield is not one of the main characters you ever think about in life, right? Like You and I know Garfield from like childhood comic strips, right? Yeah. Garfield has not really been like in conversations until they had this movie. I mean, they had the TV show when we Chris were Chris Pratt, teenagers. Samuel L. Jackson... <laughs> Uh, they had the movie with Bill. Hold on. Can I just? Can I just? I'm going to quote that. They had the they had the cartoon when we were teenagers. <laughs> All right. I think there's. I think there's be a second Garfield. What about another Quiet Place? Are we done with this? I think we're done with this. I I don't know, but I think so. It's just how many yeah. more of these can we take? You can't take Quiet Place Day Two. Another Fall Guy. I wish, but I'm doubtful. I enjoyed yeah. it. I really did enjoy it. Another Mad Max. I don't think so. That was such a flop. Really? I kind of like Furiosa, though. Yeah, me too. I mean, I didn't mind the movie at all, but it's just it's too yeah. expensive. Yeah. You're right. George Miller. Like, he doesn't do anything on a budget. No. He's like, this is what I want to do, and we're doing it. Yeah. So I, I agree. I think we've seen the last of Mad Max for a while. When you look at everything at the top, we're just going to see those another two summers from now. Inside Out 3, Despicable Me 5, Bad Boys, Ride or Die 2, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes 2. I think that's what we're going to see in 2026. Okay. Pete, anything else to cover on this ramble? No, that's it. All right. We will be back next week. All new episode. There's some good stuff coming out on streaming that we will probably have watched and reviewed by then. We can also talk a little bit more about Star Wars. Having watched the Clone Wars, myself, the animated series, I will oh, have some thoughts. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a slog, but I mean, it's a slog only because you don't watch those for the action. I watch it for the story. Yeah, exactly. And to be honest, it's good because they're short. So, I mean, they're 20, 22-minute episodes, which is good. But of the 22 minutes, there's really only like two minutes of value. And then it's just kind of watching the same old uh, droids shooting and some lightsaber play and so forth, right? Okay, we'll be back next week. Okay, tweet at us at FNS Podcast. DM us on Instagram at Films and Stuff Podcast. But as always, the best thing you can do is like this video, leave a comment below, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell. Erstwhile, Pete, appreciate you joining us today. Listeners, thank you as always for listening in. 
As Pete said, please do give us your thoughts, agree or disagree with any of our hot takes today. Our ears are open. Our minds are not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. We'll catch you next week on a Films and Stuff episode. Thanks, Ethan. Thanks, everyone. Bye now. Thank you for listening to another episode of Films and Stuff. If you haven't already, please subscribe and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever podcasts are downloaded. Films and Stuff. There is no substitute. <laughs>